Hello everyone, I'm Fred Abley, your instructor for IST210, and let's take a look at what's going on for this week. I am not throwing away my shot, I am not throwing away my shot, hey, yo, I'm just like my country, I'm young, scrappy, and hungry, and I'm not throwing away my shot. Alright, hi everybody, and uh, I'm here at one of my classrooms over at the Penn State Worthen and Scranton campus, and I thought we would just take a look here, we're going into lesson number four, which... Is time is flying by, right? So what I'm going to do here today is the same thing I did last time. I'm actually going to take you into the lab here in a moment, and then we're going to break it all down. This lab is really, really an important one, and it is challenging because it's going to force you to think a little bit outside the box. We're going to be focusing this week on what are known as business rules. As we take business rules from an organization, which are the guidelines or the way they go about doing something, and then we're going to start to translate them into uh, the, the model, the data model. So this chapter, or this, this lesson, is, is actually leading us into probably the hardest portion of the course, in my opinion, and that's the concept of data normalization. So up till now, chapter two, chapter three, and now chapter four start to lay down a very important set of ground rules so that you don't uh, get confused for chapter four. Okay, so what does all that mean? It, it simply means that people need to be making sure they're doing the readings. I'm going to be providing a number of labs over the next few, uh, few days, a number of labs, a number of videos over the next few days that will really start to help you out with some technology issues. I feel that a lot of questions uh, over the past probably 96 hours that definitely felt, in my opinion once again, that students aren't doing the reading. They're just jumping into the lab, they're doing the assessment, they're, so they're really kind of grazing the material. Database uh, development is, is something that's an applied skill, so you are going to get into the SQL and you are going to start to do some of those other things that, um, you know, that are more techie oriented. But at this stage of the course, it really becomes important to understand what are some of the philosophies or what are some of the methodologies in, in how to build a database. Okay, so after we take a look at the, uh, the lab here, I uh, would like to just toss out a few things about the project. Okay, hello everyone. We're here inside of lesson four and we're gonna be looking here briefly at what's gonna be required for lab two. I'm gonna tell you right now that we're also gonna be providing you with probably one, if not two additional videos. One it will be a lecture on some of the concepts that we're really striving to understand in chapter four and then also possibly a little bit more on understanding how to build out this particular lab. So this is just going to be an overview. First of all, you're going to see that you're going to be using Microsoft Visio again as you work on case number 11 from chapter 4. So if you go to all the way to the end of the chapter 4 in your textbook, you'll find out that there's a series of case studies and we're going to be doing number 11. To help you along with getting a better handle on what's going to be needed to build your model, I provided you some business rule tips. So if you click this link, you'll see there's a pretty lengthy list of business tips. As you read over um, uh, the case study, you'll see what you'll be required to provide. If you go to the very end of the case study, you'll see that there's a letter A and a letter B. Letter A. Uh, wants you to write all applicable business rules to establish the entities. So I give you uh, a whole slew of, of them there. It says use the following five business rules as examples and write the remaining business rules in the same format. I'm essentially giving you part A. So that's just to help you along because I really want you to focus on part B, which you're going to draw in a fully labeled and implementable crow's foot ERD based on the business rules you set forth in letter A. All right, so what you're going to be turning in is the business rules you'd like to see created, which I'm pretty much giving you most of them, and then also your uh, your Visio file, which you'll also upload for this particular assignment. Now you'll also see that I give you um, another uh, case study to review. If you go back into the end of chapter four and read over the case study for number nine, I give you a possible solution ERD. So that'll give you a sense of how, you know, how sprawling this can be. Now, in the other video, I'll give, I'll give a little bit more information, but I want you to also note table P4.11. When you look at that, you'll see that this um, is some sample data formats. 
So there's test code, test description, test frequency, employee, test code, test kit, test date, and so on. All of this is data that would be tracked in a variety of entities inside of your ERD. So in one way, you may be looking at the tables right there. I can tell you that you're gonna see at least 17 to 18 entities for this particular ERD. So I hope that helps get you started. Okay, so we're back now. You're taking a look at the lab. We've worked, we've gone through it together, providing you some examples, providing you some tips, a lot of good things coming together. Make sure you get started on this lab early this week. Don't put it off till Sunday. It'll catch you right in the butt. All right, so now here we are. I'm looking at the, uh, the project page and you can see this wonderful video here uh, of me and I know you're getting tired of these things. But one of the things you want to do is you want to take a look at this video because in the video I outline the project, which you really want to start getting going. I'm just done get, uh, getting ready to wrap up reviewing the MOU and the contracts, and I will be contacting everybody to try to get an idea of when we could discuss them and, and address any team issues. But it starts to be now that you'll start hearing me talk more about the project, getting things underway, breaking up the tasks, creating a timeline, making sure that you bit piece this project a little at a time so it's not so overwhelming. It's a big document, it's a lot of work. So I will be providing some email guidance or announcement guidance actually, uh, that I'm hoping that you'll, you'll heed and you'll, you'll take it to heart and you'll have no problem knocking out this project. Okay, so what do you need to continue to do? For this week, you have your chapter assessment. You have your, oh, I'm gonna toggle over here to the station. You have your um, chapter four assessment, I'm sorry. I'm trying to do two things at once. It's kind of tricky to do here. And I'm going to go into the modules. As you can see it over there, it's probably changing in the background. Um, so now what we have here is the uh, lab two and a chapter four assessment. Not too bad. So make sure you're getting started on everything. I want you to go out and have a great week this week. Make sure you get into this material. I know it's dry. It's great material if you're really trying to have a hard, if you're having a hard time falling asleep. But all in all, we'll, I'll be seeing you online and we'll be talking to you soon or chatting or emailing or all of the above. All right, have a great week, everybody. Talk to you soon. If it sets us free, eventually you'll see my ascendancy and I am not